Welcome to the Wayne Watson Show here on um, iHeartRadio. Thank you ever so much um, for joining us this evening. Um, we don't normally do a Sunday show, uh, but um, this was one of those things where I had to comment. Uh, a friend of mine, um, who who is our producer on the Porch Talk Radio Show that you that you hear um, on on Spreaker, part of uh, my bunch of shows we do here. Um, and he threw me this softball, this underhand slow pitch softball, handed me a Louisville, a wooden 38 ounce Louisville slugger and dared me not to swing. Okay. You gotta be a, like, a, you, you, you gotta be a lot classier guy than me not to swing. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to take I'm going to take a shot here. Um, if you have not heard this story before, um, the the title of the show is going to make perfect sense to you. The title of the show is "This is Why They Don't Take Us Seriously." This is one of the reasons why they don't take us seriously. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people because this is what people do. People um, will put you in a people group, whether you want to be in that people group or not. You know, everybody wants to be, everybody wants to be, um, everybody wants to be an individual. Everybody wants to be an individual. Everybody wants to be inside themselves, right? Everybody wants to be inside themselves. They want to be individuals. But we all, but we all, but but it's it, it's human nature to be to be programmed to be put into to be profiled into a people group. It's how humans handle other humans. It's part of our humanness. We can't take everybody differently. We have to, in our brain, categorize folks. That's how we preserve ourselves. So anyway, um, and, and that's the problem. This is why when I say people don't take us seriously, what I mean, what I mean, and I mean on certain terms, it's black people. This is why a lot of people don't take black people seriously because of what we're going to talk about here in a minute. We'll be back uh, and let you in on, on, on it if you haven't heard it already right after these messages. Hey, parents of children with asthma, here's another hit from the Breathe Easies. Come on and clean up the mold. Whoa. Clean up the mold. Whoa. Mold can trigger asthma in kids young and old. Come on and clean up the mold. Whoa. Clean up the mold in your house. Whoa. This song may be fun, but childhood asthma is not. Preventing asthma attacks can be as simple as cleaning up the mold and mildew in your house. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Because we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Because we know how to play. We'll drop it down. Because we'll we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. We'll veg it up. Search We Can online to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Remember, that's We Can. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. All right, we're back with uh, more of the Will Austin Show here on iHeartRadio. Again, thank you ever so much for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out. You know what? Um, I, I looked at the numbers here um, um, lately, and uh, we're doing pretty doggone good for a show that is as new as it is and um, doing it how we do it. Uh, we've got a lot of we got a lot of listens, and uh, we've got a lot of YouTube views. And what I need you to do is keep it up. Keep it up. Um, tell your friends. Tell your friends, please tell your friends, tell your friends. Um, and I've said this before. If you've listened, you under, I've said, you, you know, what I'm going to say, if you like it, 
your friends will like it. If you like it, your friends will like it. It's like anything else. That's why they're your friends. If you like a a particular television show, they probably like it too. If you like a particular food or drink, they probably like it too. If you like a particular sports team or or sports, they probably like it too. If you're a football fan, probably most of your friends are too. If you're a baseball fan, probably most of your friends are too. If you like the Willie Lawson show here on iHeartRadio, most of your friends will like it too. So you know what you can do for us? You can tell people. You can share this with your friends. That makes the biggest difference. That really makes it go well for us. All right, listen, we're going to, I got to get to, I got to get to the story. Um, this was a, um, and I'm, and I'm reading this from, um, buzz pro fun facts, uh, logic and a dose of snark, <laughs> a big dose of snark. Um, this is, this was posted, um, on the 28th, well, yesterday by Eric Reed has to do with an Indiana Democrat state representative, Vanessa Summers. She accused an 18 month ba- old baby of racism. Um, we're going to, at some point, <laughs> I'm not going to, I am going to be unkind here. I don't, I don't care. Um, we are at some point not going to recognize what racism is because we've been told it's this or that and this and that. And, and I think we, that we really, really do, um, people who suffered real racism an incredible disservice by nitpicking people to death on almost cussed things that don't matter. We are, we have knit, we knit people to death on stuff that isn't. And you know what? And we call it racism and bigotry when it isn't. So we're making it. I mean, we do. I mean, we're talking about, and I, I, I'm not just talking about somebody who had to sit in the back of a bus. That wasn't the racist part. I think all you people miss it. The racist part was that it was law. That's the racist part. The racist part was that it was law. And and what have we, and this is why people don't, people won't take us seriously. So what do you do now when you get on? So when people who, who are protesting at, um, you know, in Ferguson or in New York or anywhere, you get on a bus, where do you head? Everybody heads right to the back of the damn bus. Well, except me. I don't. Uh, That's the last place I want to be. It's hot back there. That's where the engine is. No, thank you. I plop my fat ass right down behind the driver if I can. But all the kids who talk about Rosa Parks, who talk about who who have subs, we have substituted Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X for Mike Brown. Seriously, who can take you seriously when you do that? Who can take you seriously when you have substituted as your standard bearer for civil rights? You have substituted uh, Rosa Parks and Emmett Till, Malcolm X, and other great martyrs, and 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 and, and the freedom and, and and the freedom riders with Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin. Who the hell takes you seriously? Are you serious? This is what this is. These are now the standard bearers. These are the people that we're holding up as why the civil rights movement is still going on. Really? This is why people don't take us seriously. I know, I know when this hits Facebook, when this hits Twitter, I'm going to need a lot of crap flying back at me at a thousand miles an hour. Let me tell y'all now when you're listening, I don't care. Cause when you're right, you don't care. How in the hell have we substituted Trayvon Martin for Rosa Parks. Why why do we make that trade? Why why have we substituted Emmett Till for Mike Brown? How's that poss how the hell is that possible? And how can we even as black people, as older black people, in our middle age who are middle aged black people, take any of that crap seriously? 
Martin Luther King and Malcolm X for Trayvon Martin and Mike Brown. Are you serious? Like, that, like somehow it's the same when it's not the same. Um, but this is but this is why people don't take it seriously. Now, this story here coming out of um, Indiana, and this is not the Indiana story about um, business being able to serve whomever they want. This thing this ain't got nothing to do with gay people coming out of Indiana. But there's a lot of weird stuff obviously, obviously coming out of Indiana. Um, this is from BuzzPo. Uh, let me read the article to you. It's from and I, and I told you who it was by. It was posted by Eric Reed. Um, an Indiana Democrat, State Representative Vanessa Summers, accused an 18-month-old baby of racism. Summers stated this, I told Judd McMillan I love his son, but he's scared of me because of my color. It's true. I asked him, please introduce your child to some, some people of color so he won't live his life as a prejudiced person. The Indianapolis Star reported that everyone in the room groaned after her comments. But it wasn't enough. Summers also told the star, he looked at me like I was a monster and turned around and cried. And I told him you need to introduce your child to some people uh, that are dark skinned so he won't so he will not be scared. The baby's father, Republican State uh, Representative Judd McMillan, questioned Summers of professionalism and said her comments were, was in, uh, her comment was incredibly unfortunate. Here's what McMillan said. Um, you like to think that we would have a professional discussion on the House floor and certainly be able to avoid having an 18 month old, 18 month old in, in, the, in the discussion. I can tell you that if he reacted the same way he reacts with anybody brand new, he buries his head in his dad's shoulder, whoever it is, uh, it, it's, it's what it's what he does. And an 18 month old kid is in a new environment up here in the place like the state house doesn't know anybody. Honestly, I don't remember anything out of the ordinary. So this is a time for this woman who, quite frankly, is not the most attractive woman that you've ever seen. This woman ain't Halle Berry. <laughs> I'll put it that I'll put it that way, and I know that's ugly, and I and I and I, I apologize. Not really, um, so much. Um, <laughs> this woman ain't Halle Berry, but to inter but to interject this conversation um, that basically says that you know what if you don't expose your child telling this white representative if you don't expose your child to more black people or more people of color they're gonna they're gonna grow up prejudiced why because she looked at this baby and this baby cried 18 months old 18 months old <laughs> you've got to be kidding me this is the again. This is the crap that subs. I mean that um, that that has been substituted for real live civil civil rights. This is the stuff that these people substitute because because I'll tell you what they ain't got any, they, they ain't got nothing else. This is all they've got, and they do a, a disservice to the thousands, the millions of people who suffered real live racism and bigotry and discrimination. They do a disservice to all of them. And you know what? And this woman, um, Vanessa Summers, is not any spring chicken. I don't know how old she is. I guess we could find out here in a second. She's no spring chicken. And again, not any dazzling beauty. And maybe that scared the child. <laughs> Maybe that she's 56 years old. She's two years older than me. So let me tell you, she was born in, 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 in 58. So I, so we are, so her and I are of similar age, born around similar times, went through similar stuff. Shame on representative Summers for bringing this whole question of racial equality, civil rights down to some nonsensical bull crap about um i may you, you know what your your baby cried your white baby cried when he saw me so so you must be raising a little racist really that's what it's brought 
That's what it's been brought down to. You got to be kidding me. You've got to be freaking kidding me. This is why nobody takes us seriously because of this crap. Because we ignore because it, because black people uh, and, and you know what I'm, I'm going to say it black Democrats especially because those are the people who are who are the black people who are in charge of a lot of urban areas ignore real stuff. All hell is breaking loose in our communities. Our communities, are, our families are falling apart. Are uh, falling crap. They've fallen apart. Our families are like dust. We're trying to embrace some bullcrap new normal about what a family is. And the family ain't mama and grandmama and 14 damn kids. That ain't family. That's a freaking mess. Where everybody, everybody in the house getting a check, that's not a family. Our family structure has been completely destroyed, starting way back with Johnson's War on the Poor 30 years ago. It's been effective. And it continues to be effective. We've got our, we've got kids not being, we've got still 40 to 50% of our young men not even graduating from damn high school and, and not graduating from high school in school systems that suck. We're not talking about, they're not graduating from school systems that are high um, achieving, high attaining school systems. We're talking about school systems that suck. That if the, that that the, even their chances of getting the ninth even their chances of getting to ninth grade are all, are almost nil. Most dropping out of middle school, and and of course no one wants to talk about it. Um, that um, our um, our black on black crime is still off the chain. That um, a black man is more likely to be killed. Not by a white police officer, but but by someone who looks just like him on the streets of every damn major city in America. And this, all this woman can be concerned about is that this white baby cried when she looked at her, a baby who had never met her, who didn't know her from anybody in a strange environment. Um, So she had to make a point on the house floor in the, the, the Indiana house floor. To say um, that this white representative needs to make sure that he exposes his baby to more people of color so they won't be scared. This is where you chose to make your stand. This is this is where you chose to make your statement. Seriously. Dumbass move. But, you know, like I said, like it says in the movie, stupid is. As stupid does. And this crap is stupid. This is why nobody takes it seriously. Um, Look at, I mean, just look at our situation. Just look at black graduation rates. Now, did she say something? She said something about black graduation rates. Are they, are they really, are, are you really working it? Now, here's the deal. It would have been one thing, Representative Summers, had you had that conversation with Judd McMillan, Judd McMillan, the Republican, the white Republican, in private, and you both had a big laugh over it, because you had to have a big laugh over it, because it is, because the conversation is ate up with a dumbass. So it's so you you had to be joking, and then that would have been it. But no, you brought it to the House floor and told everybody that you had this conversation, that you that you talked to the freaking newspaper, the Indianapolis Star. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? And then you double down on it. So much, so much fact that that, that McMillan, the, um, the the Republican white dad of this baby, had to comment, and he didn't throw you under the bus. He should have. What he should have said that was a that was a that that was the biggest piece of stupid that has come down that has been put in front of me in a long freaking time is what he should have said, but he didn't. He said that your remarks were incredibly unfortunate. It's too bad. It's too bad that you are dumb as hell. Is what he should have said, but he didn't. I mean, and because th- this is how 
this this is the stuff that may because because we got I mean we, we got to be realistic. This is the stuff that people hear about, right? This is the stuff that people hear about. This is the stuff that people hear about. So if we're so if you're concerned so if you're really concerned about the plight of a black man in America, then we better start being serious about the plight of the black man in America. This kind of thing is not serious. It's stupid. All right, listen, we got to get out of here. Thanks for coming to the Will Austin Show here on um, iHeartRadio. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, take care of yourself.